if we look at your data and we see that 95% of your traffic comes from a mobile device and your product page on a mobile device is not user friendly, that's gonna hurt you tremendously. Hello everybody, welcome to Search. This week we will talk about customizing big commerce templates to maximize conversions. So Joe, probably we've done around, I don't know, 90, 95 projects in the past six months on um, a lot of conversion optimization for product pages and category pages. And we get that question a lot. The first question is, do I need a redesign? Most e-commerce owners, they are looking at redesign or repurposing a product page as, you know, I need it to look prettier. I need it to be more attractive, but they're not really making these decisions based on analytics and based on statistics. And what we try to do is we try to say, look, let's look at this. What do you want your average order volume to be? Does this affect your lifetime value? Are you trying to upsell pre-checkout or post-checkout upsell to your clients? And we basically determine a product page or a category page from a usability standpoint. If you are just selling this wallet without customization, your design should be different than a person who sells this wallet and you can personalize the wallet with engraving and everything else. So when we talk to prospects, when we talk to clients from a redesign standpoint with big commerce specifically, what are some of the issues that you hear from um, customers from a design or conversion optimization standpoint? First thing we have to look at is the data. Um, so without looking at the data and seeing their data, it's really hard to assess their current situation. So in the beginning, a lot of times they're, they're actually making uh, assumptions, right? They're saying, oh, my, my, my uh, product page doesn't look good or it's not converting very well. You know, it could be doing better. Well, we have to go in and look at your data. So, for example, if we look at your data, we see that 95% of your traffic comes from a mobile device and your product page on a mobile device is not user friendly. The add to cart is way down below the fold. In order to, for somebody to pick a selection, they have to you know, jump through loops. That's gonna hurt you tremendously. So we have to look at your analytics. We have to see where the traffic is coming from and then we kind of have to position ourselves to go after you know, your target demo and where they're coming in from. Got it. So most of the issue here arises from the fact that most business owners, again, do not understand the difference between design and functionality. So a design element is me placing the add to cart button above the fold as close to the top of the page as possible. A design feature would be, you know, if I go to your mobile version, I better have some sticky calls to action because on mobile, people have a, even a less, less of an attention span. So they need, to, you, they need to be guided. They need to see add to cart, call, contact us, chat with us very, very prominently, right? But when we think about functionality, if you have options on that product page and you're not providing somebody with a step-by-step -step process to select those options, that will be a functionality. So at Optimum 7, based on what Joe is also saying, is we look at the possibility of differentiating design with functionality. You're differentiating from a planning standpoint, but when you're executing, the design needs to support the functionality. Let's talk about that a little bit. Joe, we worked on some accounts recently that had a lot of customizations on their product pages due to the way that they sell these products or due to their um, child products being really, really complex. Talk to us about how design complements functionality and why it's so important. Absolutely. So like if you have something that's very complex and if you have something that it's maybe a customizable feature, uh, remember on the back end, that's going to be pretty complex. All the different possibilities and variants uh, that you could possibly put together the different combinations on the back end it's it's a mess it's really a ton of data so you need to get that data and simplify it on the front end and make it as easy as possible for a user to go through add uh you know any type of customization to their product and continue to check out and this is going to vary based off of the screen size this is going to vary based on the device so the way that this functionality works on desktop is going to be different than the way that the functionality works on mobile so going back to design versus functionality and and sim and how to simplify this what it comes down to is designing for the device uh every single functionality that you create every single page needs to be designed individually for each and every screen size that your consumers are possibly going to be coming in from so if you don't do that you might have a great functionality that works on desktop the moment that a user tries to access it on mobile it could be a disaster yeah 
Yep, and a lot, of, and again, unfortunately, a lot of people, including developers, don't, they don't pay attention to conversion. Our offer at Optimum 7 is that we never do something as a task. When we are making a redesign, it needs to be justified with facts. When we look at your product page, when we look at your category pages, when we're doing search and filter functionality, when we are doing any upsell functionality, we only think about the one thing and one thing only, and that's conversions. And sometimes we have issues with clients. They say, you know, you did this functionality for me, but it doesn't look pretty. Yeah. What do you say to that, Joe? I mean, you know, you, you've seen me literally discuss with clients, like who cares if it's pretty or not? This is going to make you money. This is going to convert. And you and I have disagreements on this sometimes because, you know, you know, I can, being the crazy guy that I am, I can prove that that's going to push functional, uh, that's going to push conversions. But the client just doesn't like how it looks. But if I did it in a manner that the client is going to love it from a design perspective, it wouldn't convert. So what do you say to a guy like that? Well, what you have to say is we have to look at the data, right? We can't make assumptions mm -hmm. here. We can't speak for the masses. Uh, as much as we try to you know, think that our way is, is the right way, we can't speak for everyone else. So we have to run it. We have to see how the numbers come back, how it converts. The conversion rate percentage, the increase that we get, that will justify you know, uh, the, the way that it looks. And, and if we want to make it a little bit prettier, we'll make it a little bit prettier. And then again, look at the, look at the numbers, see how it performed. Did it get worse? If it did, we're going to make it look ugly again so we can get those numbers back. And if not, then we'll, we'll leave it as is. But it really just comes down to you need to test it and you can't. You know, we always say that um, perfection is the enemy of progress, right? If you want to progress, launch it. Let's see the data come in and then we can tweak it and make it pretty along the way. If we wait till you think it's beautiful, it might never go live and you spend a ton of money on a functionality that no one's ever using. And we see that often. Most business owners look at their websites and they're so attached to design. If you're a business owner, especially an e-commerce owner, you need to unattach yourself from your design because the fact that you think it's pretty or the fact that you think it's ugly makes no difference. This website is not created for you. It's created for your audience, for your customers, the data, the analytics, the conversion rate, the average time on site, the CPA, the cost per acquisition is going to make the decision, not you. So Duran, whenever you're quoting this out, I mean, this is design sometimes plus functionality. What can I typically expect to, to pay for a, a template customization that's optimized for conversions? So it really depends. I mean, I know, I know clients and prospects hate this answer, but it all depends. Uh, from a big commerce customization standpoint, there are a lot of websites that are on the old version of big commerce. We always try to put them on the new stencil template. Uh, because it's a lot better, a lot more um, optimized. You're looking at, you know, if you look, if you want minor changes, you're looking at a few thousand dollars. If I need to just do some changes on your product page or your header or your footer or your responsive, you're looking at a, cup, a couple of thousand dollars, worst case. But if you want something more detailed, it could go as high as 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, depending on your products, depending on the functionality. Uh, and remember, design and functionality Yes, we try to differentiate it when we are planning it, but when we are executing it, they need to be happening simultaneously. Absolutely, yeah. You, you cannot do a search and filter project and enable this. And we gave we gave Amazon as a great example of this. They have great search and filter functionality on the left end. That's why they make billions of dollars. They were the first people that did this. If you're doing a search and filter functionality like that, you have to keep design elements in mind. So the direct answer to your question, I would say anywhere from that, you know, $2,000 to $50,000. But on average, if we're doing redesign or retemplate, it doesn't usually exceed seven, dollars $8,000. Now, my question to you, Joe, is a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people look at it and they're like, oh, $7,000. This, you know, there are businesses that are doing three, four, five million dollars. They look at $7,000 like a lot of money. And they don't realize, they don't focus on, man, if I can increase my conversion 10%, I'm doing three million. If I can increase my conversion 10%, and that's not a lot, I'm going to make $3.3 .3 million. And here I am worried about $7,000. What do you say to those guys? UX and UI needs to be seen as an investment. If you're going to be 
redesigning, right? That's seven thousand dollars. That's an investment that you're making that you will see a return on because again, you're optimizing for conversions. So what we tell these business owners is you can't look at it as an expense. This is an investment, right? You are optimizing for conversions. So therefore, that seven thousand dollars that you're investing into optimizing your user experience and your user interface you're gonna see returns on. That's like you said, if it's 10% on $3 million, compounded over three years, four years, that's a nice return. Yeah, yeah. And, and what we say, and sometimes people really talk to us and they believe us, but they're still very, very concerned. And they're like, look, this is a lot of money. And it's not a lot of money, but they think it's a lot of money. They don't look at the return. They only look at what they're spending. Then what we do is we say, you know what? I have five clients very similar to you. Talk to these five guys on what we did for them and what kind of results we got for them. And that convinces people usually pretty fast. So if you're working with another company for design or redesign or template customization, or if you're working with Optumsum, just ask them, you know, give me three to five people that I can speak to who can basically give me details on what you did for them from a design standpoint or conversion optimization standpoint. And what were the results? And we have a ton of case studies on Optimum 7 that show this. But if you don't believe us, you can go visit there. Here is the most important point. Whatever you're spending on your conversion optimization, design, branding, you're hitting multiple birds with one stone. You're making your brand a better brand. You're building more trust in your brand. You're building more authority. You're building better functionality. You're building better design. You're increasing your conversion rates. You're increasing your usability. You're increasing your trust. So don't look at it as an expense. Look at it as an investment because this will pay you back if it's executed and done and planned in the right way possible. We'll talk to you guys next week.